Welcome to Where or When. This is Coach Dave, and I know that you're probably saying, Coach Dave, when we see you on TV, you normally got an accordion hanging around your neck. Well, we'll do a little bit of that today, too. For many of you folks, you probably don't realize that North Attleboro has many historical sites, monuments, buildings, etc. So we thought we'd put together a little TV show uh, describing some of those sites and then play some music that uh, goes with the era of the site. So today, we are at the community school. And it was not always the community school. It was one of the several high schools that we had in North Attleboro. And the first high school was built in 1867, somewhere around here, supposedly on this actual site. In 1881, they decided, well, they need a little better or bigger school. So they built a new school, and that was up in the corner of Broad Street and High Street, which is all three or four blocks up to our left here. Well, unfortunately, on May 28th, 1917, we had a little fire up there, and the school burned down. In 1919, a physician named Jay Carney, MD, built a house or a home right on the site of that school that burnt down, and that, that home is still there today. We're going to break now. We're going to run right down to the studio and play a little music for you. Then we're going to run right back here and talk a little more. This particular song uh, was written in 1914. And uh, around the turn of the century, of the 20th century, there was, there was a, a genre of music which saw the basis of all American music called the blues. And in 1914, a fellow named W.C. Handy wrote for us to listen to and play the St. Louis Blues. <laughs> We're back. 1917, about three weeks after the fire for the old high school, the voters of North Attleboro approved the money to purchase the land from the Barrows estate upon which we are standing today 
for the new school and they bought it for $40,000 and construction began on the new school. In the fall of 1917, the first uh, freshman class started school it would consist of 60 students. Now, of course, the school was not completed and the old one had burned down, so they were housed at the Badaraco building uh, for their classes. Now, this is a very small area. They only had four small rooms, and they, so they were pretty cramped. So in October that year, they actually moved down to the Barrows Estate, the Barrows Homestead. The Barrows was, were a very affluent family, a very well-known family in, in, the, in the town of North Attleboro. So they were actually being taught within the house or the homestead. And of course, they, had the, they were in there with flowered wallpaper and gas jets and everything, and, and, it, and it was uh, quite an experience for them. And because of the, of, of, of the winters, the heat was not that great. Uh, so they had many days off be, because of the cold weather. They were there for the next year and a half or so while construction continued on the new school. And as you can see behind me, this is quite, quite an impressive building, and it's all brick, and it uh, took quite some time for them to build it. Right now, we're going to journey back to the studio for our second song. In the early 1900s, there was also a, a uh, form of music called ragtime, and ragtime actually morphed a little bit into Dixieland. What happened was the turn of the century. Of course, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have TV, we didn't have radio, we didn't have any of that good stuff. But what every home had was a piano, and sheet music was uh, very popular at that time. A lot of people bought sheet music, and that's how they played these songs. And ragtime basically was, was piano-based, and of course, Dixieland had all the other horns and things into it, and a fellow uh, uh, who was big, big ragtime musician, a fellow named Scott Joplin out of uh, St. Louis. And you can go into his house and you can play on his piano. And we know because we were there and we did it. So, But this song was written in 1911. We've got to kind of combine the ragtime and Dixieland into one song about a fellow named Alexander. And he had a band. And Irving Berlin wrote Alexander's band, Alexander's ragtime band. In the fall of 1919, the students expected to start the year in their new school. 
but unfortunately it was not finished. However, by November they were able to move into the new building. And they're really excited about, about this building with this big size, but also it came with a bit of a consequence. Because you see, when they're in the other buildings, when it came time for lunch, they were all allowed to run downtown to the, to the snack shop and, and get some lunch. Well, the new school had a cafeteria or a lunchroom, so they were not allowed to leave, and they had to stay in the building all day, and they weren't real, real thrilled about that. But they did persevere. And during the year, they sold some tickets for a social, and they presented a school play. And in June, they broke for a summer vacation. In September, the students returned for their senior year. But the class had diminished to only 33 students. Now, there are no records actually from that era as to why that would have happened, but one can only speculate that this was during World War I, so perhaps a lot of the male members of the class had, had joined the armed forces. And also, actually, during that time, sometimes for a lot of people, high school wasn't really that important. The girls sold tags, and with that money, they purchased a new flag for their school. In January, they attempted to hold a dance, but the weather did not cooperate. But in March, the Glee Club had an event, and in May, they presented the first senior class play. And in June, of course, they became the first graduating class. This song was uh, written in 1917, and the full title is Back Home Again in Indiana. And this is uh, uh, a, a jazz tune for the ages. It's, it's uh, all the jazz players played this tune. And it's not the official song of Indiana, but it's always played at the beginning of the Indiana 500, played or sang. And, and uh, so it's been done as a ballad, it's been done as an up-tempo, so to cover both bases, we're going to start it off kind of slow, and then, well, if you know me, why play anything slow when you can play it fast? So little tune called Back Home Again in Indiana. <laughs>
1953, a large addition was added to the school, which included uh, the gymnasium, which I am holding up right now. In 1973, the new high school was built up on Landry Avenue. And this school, the old high school, became a junior high school for grades seven and eight. And it also housed two rooms for sixth graders. However, they kept them separate for some unknown reason. The sixth graders were by themselves and the seventh and eighth were by themselves. 1998, the new middle school was built up on Landry Avenue right next to the high school. And this school, the old North Attleboro High School, became the community school and which up to today houses grades K through six. So I hope you've enjoyed our little trip to North Attleboro High School. We're gonna break now for our next song. 1918, almost a hundred years ago, this song was, uh, was popular. Now, the thing about this song is it sounds like it should be a song out of the 30s or 40s because it's a little bit hip for that age. But it's not. It's uh, from 1918, and it's called After You've Gone. So it sounds a little, well, probably sounds a lot like this. <laughs> enjoyed our little tour of North Attleboro High School. Uh, when researching this, uh, we had a lot of help from Nancy Campbell, who's the curator or museum director of the Falls Fire Barn Museum. And one of the, the places that we got a lot of our information from was we found a yearbook from that particular year. And one of the students had written a class poem, which actually was four pages long and detailed their four years at North Attleboro High School. So there's a lot of useful information there. So once again, we hope you've enjoyed yourself. This is Coach Dave. We're going to see you all in the next edition of Where or oh When.